Alrighty guys, uh, my name is Richard. Thank you guys for coming out here for another distance learning video with the Texas State Museum of Asian Cultures. Today, instead of talking about some of our sharp objects or a few of the other things we've talked about so far, we're going to talk a little bit about why museums matter and why places like us do the things we do. And one of the best examples we have of that is our collection of Haikata dolls. Uh, they're called Haikata dolls, H-A-K-A-T-A, -A -A, because that is the name of the town in which they originate, as far as anybody knows. That's what these guys here are, is Haikata dolls that our founder, Billy Chandler, picked up, had commissioned, and bought in various forms, usually commissioned, when she was in Japan in the 50s and 60s. And they are kind of an ancient art. They originally started in the 17th century, so 1600s, about the middle of the 1600s, and they became really popular around 1890, a uh, little ways after the Meiji Restoration. And they're kind of a dying art now. They're not very easy to get a hold of because they're so labor-intensive to create in the first place. It takes a well-trained artisan with about five, ten years of experience at least to make one of these and it takes them about a hundred man hours to get it done especially on the more detailed or the larger uh, dolls the process is you take a lump of white clay you mold it into something basically human shaped basically a blank you bake it so it stays in that shape at least rather than backslides back into a lump of clay and then you re-wet smaller parts of the face or the body to start working the details in. And eventually, you bake that, and you move on to another section of the doll. So you would bake it, do the face, re-wet the face and mold it in. Then you would bake it, re-wet the body, do the arms and the sleeves and the dress, and bake it, and then you'd move down to the shoes. And it can take about 100 man hours to get one of these things done, because you have to paint it after you do all of that. So it's really, it's a dying art. There's not a lot of artisans doing it anymore. There's only about 80 or so people all in the Haikata region of Japan that are still doing this. And so one of the things we do is we bring these out and let kids see them, let adults see them. It's an art form they wouldn't have seen normally. And we preserve them so that they offer us something to show people in the future that would be really kind of historic in another hundred years these are going to be really rare now speaking of historic something you're probably noticing is that there's a fair number of historical figures and out of about 2,000 Haikata dolls we have here a good chunk of them are historical figures or historical scenes because we use them for teaching history classes uh, Miss Chandler when she was doing it back in the day 50s, 60s, 70s she was doing a lot of history classes with them, hence Gandhi, the armless artist, who we talked about in our virtual tour recently, and a few others. And so they're kind of an interesting cultural piece just from that, as well as the fact that a lot of these are simple slice-of-life displays showing older falconry techniques or what a samurai would have looked like in simple dress. Now, on the subject of historical figures, we're going to go over to our next segment. We have a couple of our historical paintings, and hopefully the first thing you noticed here is that these are not very Japanese. What they are, and why we have them, is they were done by a Japanese artist for the museum's founder back in the 70s. She was using them for teaching history classes to the children of Western, primarily American, military personnel that were stationed over there post-occupation. And what she was doing was teaching them mainly U.S. Civil War history, which is why these are paintings of the U.S. Civil War. And in fact, we have 63 U.S. Civil War paintings of various forms. And these are actually two of my favorites. Uh, when, when you see us out here talking about things, we'll talk about all kinds of different topics. And this is one I always like talking about because they're both really wonderful paintings and a little off. 
we actually don't get to bring these out as often as we'd like to because we have so many paintings here. We have about 650 paintings in our collection. So it's really hard to get them all out to show them. And this is a very striking scene. You can tell the artist, his name is Sergio Zell. That's his signature block there. If you want to try and look him up later, he's kind of hard to get good info on. We've tried. But the artist was clearly known for a fairly visceral, fairly intense scene here. I mean, it's right as Lincoln is being assassinated. It's kind of sharp and definitely was meant to catch the eye of kids and adults back in the 60s, 70s to get their attention and get them to pay attention to the topic. The other one here is interesting to me personally because I actually grew up in the Midwest, not far from where President Lincoln was born. And so I can see where there are several things wrong with the background, the location, the details. However, Ozawa, the artist, was working with the technology and the resources he had at the hand. And so he was doing what he could to try and demonstrate the art and the background and the terrain to people in a painting. So it was a little hard for him to do. And so it's kind of interesting to look at it 50 years later as somebody who's driven through the parts of Kentucky and Illinois that Lincoln has been and think about all the different things that are right and wrong with it. In fact, my challenge to you, the viewer, is to look some of that up later and see if you can spot some of the things that are right and some of the things that are wrong. But once again, it goes to show why places have to preserve this kind of art so that you can see it later on and learn not only about the art itself, but learn about the artist. This was somebody who hadn't been there before and was doing his best to help Miss Chandler teach history and so was putting his real heart and soul into making these paintings. That's why he did 63 of them. And it's also somebody that was willing to do a fairly intense visual shot so that people would be interested and be hooked to the topic at hand. So, thank you guys for joining us. I hope you guys research this a little bit later on. It's an interesting topic. And yeah, thank you guys for coming out here with us. We'll see you again next time.